there in Facebook land. My name's Edna Sue McKee, and today I'm going to be joining with Willie Pendergrass, and we'll be making a buttermilk pound cake. And there's a story behind this buttermilk pound cake. Willie was a student at Lockhart School when I used to work there. And he was, I learned at, at his young age that he was a great cook because of his grandmother who taught him. And he would come to school, and he would bring samples of good stuff. <laughs> and he'd run up to the office and give me a piece. Share He shared many things. But this recipe for this buttermilk pound cake, and you can see how crusty this thing is, because I've had it for over 30 years, maybe longer than that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I've used, every time I cook a pound cake, this is my recipe. And this was Willie's recipe. And his grandmother gave that to him. So I'm going to let him tell a little bit about himself. And as a student at Lockhart, and me, a secretary, how you we interacted with each other. All right. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I'm Willie Pendergrass, and uh, me and Edna have been friends forever. I um, Actually, the story behind coming to Lockhart is that we lived in the last part, upper part of Chester County, New York County, so we uh, were going to uh, start off at um, Head Start in Lawrence and then to Kindergarten, York Road, Chester, and we went to first grade at Zion Pilgrim Elementary in Wilkesburg. <clears throat> so we had a uh, one of our neighbors and our church member, Ms. Meryl Powell, uh, got recruited lover, lover. got recruited to Lockhart Elementary School, a union school system. <clears throat> So she started talking to the parents, and so my mom and dad immediately jumped on, well, my kids are going to Lockhart. So, well, we got introduced to Lockhart in the second grade, and if I'm correct, my second grade teacher was Mrs. Ray Hawkins. Right. And uh, it was a wonderful life, and, and I loved all my teachers, and I had Miss Daniel. She always heard Miss Odell. I had Miss Daniel. Oh, you did? <laughs> she, Miss Daniels, I had to learn her right quick because if, Ooh, she was strict. if you ask, uh, can I go to the bathroom, she would look at you for a while. Then she would say, well, can you? Then I said, oh, may I? <laughs> then she'd say, no, you can go. So if you did anything out of the way, she would just sit there and stare you down. Uh -huh. And I told her one day, I would rather for you to spank me than to stare me down. But anyway, Miss um, <clears throat> Moore, oh boy. But she was one of my favorites, though. Me and her was just like that. And Miss Odell, I just thought she was just my mama, my grandma. She always, her Miss Dane always encouraged me to... Um, uh, be uh, be a chef. Miss Odell said, you ought to go on a cruise ship and be a chef. Well, I never did get to he do should, that. He should have. But uh, I learned how to cook. Cooking is in our in, in the family. <clears throat> uh, the good on my mom's side are, oh boy, they are some kind of cooks. And then on on my dad's mother's side, she's a Thompson. Uh, my grandma's name Maybelle Thompson, and she married to Pendergrass. Well, she um, I, she got to raise me because you know how, how it goes. Your mom and dad gets married. Well, my older sister Phyllis was born. My dad was working in North Carolina, and he was building his own home. Well, I guess it took forever. So by the time he got it finished, I was almost three years old. And I remember uh, hugging on my grandmama's dress tail and her leg because I didn't want to go with them. So my daddy said, oh, just let him stay with my mama. I had really double coverage because my mom was just four houses up, so I was in and out of her house as well. But she learned me everything. <clears throat> it hurt my mom. My grandma was an excellent cook, and she just, when I was a little boy, she had me stand up in a chair uh, making biscuits. She'd give me a bowl. she have a bowl. Of course, you know, mine didn't turn out right, but she said they did. And she learned me how to cook everything, starting off with little simple things. And um, so this cake that we're going to bake today was one of her cakes. It's called uh, Buttermilk Pound Cake. And it is wonderful. <laughs> and if you've been around me, you, you've had a piece of it. Because I, keep, I cook this cake probably every month. Uh, I have a lady in our church 
who gives me fresh eggs. Oh, boy. And that <laughs> makes a big difference if you get to use the organic eggs. Right. So I guess we better get started. Yeah. So Willie's already greased the tube pan with Crisco. He took a paper towel and went around and coated it real good, leaving no spots. Right. So um, let's just get started. Okay. <clears throat> I use this pre-measured. Yeah, the only cup. way to go. <laughs> one cup of Crisco. Yeah, one cup of Crisco. So if you were doing, you know, if you were doing um, uh, butter, it would actually be two sticks. But the same thing with this. This is two sticks, but it's Crisco. And we'll put it in the bowl like so. Okay. One stick of butter. Yep. Stick it in there. And you can use um, you can use uh, sweet cream or unsalted. I prefer sweet cream creams. I say if you're gonna do it, do it right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Now we're gonna use two and a half cups of granulated sugar, and um, <clears throat> we put the dry ingredients in a separate bowl and mix those before we put it in the KitchenAid because I made the mistake one time of putting them all in the KitchenAid and when you <laughs> cut it on, no matter how low it is, <laughs> I was coated. Oh boy, I've had it to apply all over me and all over the floor and everything and you go like, wow. But it's that's the joy of cooking, just get in there and have fun. Yep, Okay. that's two. Two cups, we're gonna put it in the bowl. Okay, now we need one half cup. So, this is a kind of a different recipe. Most pound cakes call for um, three cups of sugar, but this one only calls for two and a half. It's really light and it's really light and fluffy. And, and all of you, if you decide to make it, you're gonna love it. You'll love it to the point this is the only kind you cook. <laughs> Even though, yeah. Need to go down just a little bit. Don't want to. You know, I'd rather right. have less than than more. You know, you can always. Uh, there, you go. there we go. Now that's a half a cup. So two and a half <laughs> cups of sugar. <clears throat> All right. Now. All right. We'll put these in that same measuring cup. Mm -hmm. And beat them up with this whisk before we get started. This is one of the most moist <laughs> pound cakes that you can cook. I, there's nothing any worse than cutting a slice of dry pound I'm cake. telling you, if you go like, uh. <laughs> Do you cook every day? I cook uh, like on Sunday. I, uh, a lot of my friends say, oh, you cooked all that? I'm going like, hey, you know what? I don't expect to cook again until Wednesday. So I'll cook like two meats every Sunday and four or five vegetables and, and it's my grandma say a little pone of cornbread <laughs> or some biscuits like I did yesterday. And um, I'll do that until Wednesday and then Wednesday evening I'll 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 cook something else. All right now <clears throat> You need uh, three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, which is, we used to say in the olden days, plain flour. That's right. But, it, and, and you can't beat, after they took a uh, red band of confidence away from America, uh, we, everybody hooked on... Um, white lily. White lily. And you can't go wrong. So white lily plain flour, right. not white lily saffrising. If you were to use saffrising, Trust oh me, you open that door on that cake, it'll be flat as a pancake. So always use plain flour. <clears throat> so we're gonna use we're gonna do three and a half three mm -hmm. and a half cups. <clears throat> See what I normally do is uh I take another measured cup and and um fill it up with one cup and put one cup in at a time, the next cup, the next cup, make sure I don't have enough that I don't have too much flour in there. So maybe that's what we ought to do, perhaps. You're going to do one cup at a time? One cup at a time. Let's just see how much extra okay. flour we're going to have right now. So you got all the lumps out. I hope so. 
You know what we're gonna have to do? We're gonna have to buy Edna uh, a sifter. I got one. Oh, okay. I thought you didn't have a sifter. I'm going like. I got one in my what? old Tommy one. What? Well, now nah, look, listen at you. <laughs> oh, I didn't think you had one. I'm going like I'm gonna have to buy her one. I'm go go to Walmart for her. Go home and bring it back. <laughs> no, I got one. <laughs> now, um, can I use this? Oh yeah. All right. Let's see here. I, well, you better move it from the sugar though, right? Because you don't want to put it in with the sugar. See, I like to make a mess when I cook. That's okay. That's what washcloths are for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I crochet washcloths. Yeah, I got mine, the, the crocheted ones that you get, you know, gave me, you sent to me. Oh, I just love them. See, now that's a whole um, a cup mm -hmm. right there already. That's one cup. Mm-hmm. And it calls for three and a half, so there's one. Yep. Yeah, that's why I said we better um, we better do one cup at a time. Because we don't want a dry cake. We want a beautiful Mars cake. Yeah, this one's going to be a masterpiece. <laughs> oh, I just got Mr. Willie making this one. Oh, boy. The chef in himself. Tons some quarters. Tons some quarters. <laughs> Boy, there's been some fine cooks in that neighborhood. That oh, that um, what you talking about? You know my you I know Edna. You know my cousin Janie Craig. <clears throat> she used to work at like, yeah. She was the she was the cafeteria hey, at she, Lockhart School. She was the one that made everybody fat because she pretty much cooked about everything. That's what happened to me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't beat that steak and gravy. That homemade soup, peach that peach cobbler, oh, and that turkey dressing and them yeast rolls every day. And I always go through and I say, I said, Jane, when you gonna make, when you gonna make a cake? Oh, sometimes, sometimes. And sometimes she, she would forget to take the butter out before she left school. And she come in that morning, the butter's cold, and she make the batter and have all them pans that I have seen her get that pan, throw that pan, cause mm -hmm. they would. But not often now. That's three cups in there. So now you need a half. Right. Does that look? Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's it right there. You don't want to go in the Now look how much more flour we'd have had in that cake. That's a four cup. Oh, measure. yeah, boy. Well, okay, I see now then. Okay. Now you okay in the flour. You gotta have a fourth of a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon baking soda. There's the fourth, and here's the salt. <clears throat> Are we gonna flour yeah, the cake uh, pan? Yeah, we're gonna flour the cake pan. Yeah, you can, because you can use that flour in that bowl there. That'll be okay. okay. <clears throat> One fourth teaspoon of salt. Yep, one fourth teaspoon. Out. <laughs> Come on out of there. Why are you hiding? All right. Whoop. Now we need to add one half teaspoon of baking soda. <clears throat> when you're using like cream cheese, uh, sour cream, uh, and buttermilk. Pretty much a recipe will ask you to use uh, baking soda. Now, my cream cheese pound cake I make, it says uh, it only it, it wants baking powder. <clears throat> Some people have asked me the question, what if you don't use any leveling, well, what makes your cakes rise? So the answer to that question is, when you are incorporating your sugar and butter or shortening, whatever you use, that's whipping air into your cake. And your other leveling, when you just use a regular recipe that doesn't call for salt or baking soda, baking powder in it, your eggs is what is rich. And that's what helps your cake be the best cake and it helps it rise. Mm -hmm. So those are the two things, whipping good air, creaming it real good, and putting your eggs in, and one at a time after each addition. Don't overbeat them. Just make sure they just disappear right quick. Okay, and then you will need one cup of whole buttermilk. Please, ma'am, please, sir, do not use low-fat buttermilk. No. You need the real McCoy. Because <clears throat> this cake's not for the dieters. No, this is for people who want to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> they like to lick the bowl. 
So after we start mixing. So we have uh, we have two uh, one cup of Crisco shortening, one stick of real butter. We have four eggs. We have two and a half cups of sugar, three and a half cups of plain flour, one fourth teaspoon salt, one half one teaspoon is it one one half teaspoon of baking soda. soda and one cup of whole buttermilk we're going to use uh, lemon flavor and vanilla now, good, this is the good stuff that makes the cake taste yeah good. so we're going to use two and a half teaspoon now i always put my flavor in my milk I, what do you do edna i do i put my liquids together uh, okay okay in the eggs all right one. okay Go. So, two and a half teaspoons of lemon. <clears throat> Put it in your buttermilk. Mm mm. That makes it taste really. What you do? What you call What you talking about? And one teaspoon of vanilla. Right? It says two and a half teaspoon of lemon. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, you don't like mine. Mine never stay together. My my spoon, so I just don't even bother about putting them back. Okay. <clears throat> Good old McCormick vanilla, and it calls for one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, now we have a little. How we can? How is that going to fit in there? Go ahead and pour it in this, okay. and we'll whisk it up. Okay. Woo! Gonna be yummy. Mm, 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 mm. This is what gives that cake the character. You better believe it. I smell it now. I, what you talking about? I used to sit in, sit in the kitchen and wait for it, and I'd be looking in that stove. I'm like, oh. Makes your house smell good. Oh, what goodness. you talking about? Yeah, somebody come to the door, they'll say, mm, something smell good in here. So we're going to not do that. Yeah, we're going to put that in there. Yeah, what does okay. that mean? All right. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to be, begin the process of mixing the cake. So we got... Edna's good old, good old kitchen aid, and, and it's her favorite color. Yep, cobalt blue. That's me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna lock it down. We'll start off. He's creaming the butter and the Crisco together. Yeah. And this is a what you you know need to concentrate on. You know, getting it all good and creamy. Just take your time. And you know you can increase your speed as you go, but you know you want to get it good and creamy. Oh boy! So we hope all y'all out there in the Facebook land are gonna try this, and you just let us know how it turns out. Can't rush making a good cake. Oh no. You have just, to be very patient and take your time. That's right. That's right. Just, Mixing everything thoroughly is one of the main things that you do. Mm -hmm. You have a spatula, Edna? I do. So I like to stop my KitchenAid and scrape down the sides of the bowl and put it back in there, you know, because you want to get it all incorporated really good. This is This is the key to a good pound cake. <clears throat> Let's have this one right here. All right. Oh. I always take my bowl off and, you know, just kind of. It's good and creamy, too. Yeah, it's pretty. Just look at there. Just nice and creamy. And that's just the real butter and the Crisco. Mm hmm. I used to get up sometime before day. Uh, on Sunday morning, if I didn't get a chance to bake, because people, my grandmother, Maybell, loved cake and pie. <laughs> so my life was spent in the kitchen after she turned the kitchen over to me. She had to have a cake every week, every Sunday, and uh, or either we're going to have a cobbler pie, but it's got to be something sweet in every day through the week. So... Me so one one Sunday, uh, we were eating dinner right after church, and when she came from church, she thought that she supposed to go in the bathroom, wash her hands, and she's ready to go to the 
table to eat. And I said, Grandma, you got to wait. I got to get it all together. Oh, let's come on. Let's eat. So, and sometimes I want to fry some good old fried chicken. Oh, and she hated that I had to fry that chicken because she had to wait to get the other part of the meal. So, um, one time I said, I'm going to play a little joke on her. So, we got to eat. And she said, now, where is the dessert? I said, oh. You know, I didn't get the, I thought I smelled something this morning. I said, I don't know what you smell. Then all of a sudden, I'd go to the stove, jerk the door down, and I'd have a big old cobbler pie in there. She said, you little rascal, you. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're going to add your um, dry, dry ingredients. We'll start, you know, we, all, we got them all together, so it don't make any difference. No, you, he's got in that bowl the flour and the sugar, the salt and the baking soda. And what else? Mm, and that's it. The that's flour, it. sugar, baking soda. And all and the dry ingredients. Mm -hmm. It's good to put everything in a separate bowl of yeah. dry ingredients so you can mix that thoroughly too. Yeah. That's I'm just kind of stirring it, yes. And make sure it's all kind of together so you won't have part of whatever in there. So, Oh, boy. Looks good. Mm-hmm. It's going to be good, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, what you need? Okay, now I want those are that's the eggs in the buttermilk. So what we're gonna do is we'll start off with a little dry ingredient. You have to do a little bit at a time because if you're using a kitchen aid, I made the mistake one time of dumping everything in at once, and I was coated. It goes. And through. and what we're gonna do is just dry to wet and in and dry. Ooh, boy, that looks good already. Make sure that smells good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little bit more flour and sugar. And we'll put some more egg and butter. He's alternating these ingredients because it'll mix better. <clears throat> yeah. Just back and forth, but you want to end. You want to end with your dry ingredients and not the eggs and buttermilk, because you know you really want to get the eggs and buttermilk in there. And we also in the wet ingredients we put the lemon flavor and the um, vanilla. vanilla flavor in that too. See, that's gonna help, cause you know sometimes when you're baking, you get a hold of somebody's cake and uh, you can't you can't you, you can't tell the e nothing but the eggs you won't find the flavor so you don't never want to do that so make sure that you got enough flavor and my grandma always told me say it ain't gonna hurt to put a little bit extra in there another secret is don't buy imitation to make a good cake no you gotta have the extract it's got to say pure mm -hmm. on both of them that's right oh ain't that ain't that so pretty enough mm -hmm. mm getting creamy. Yeah, it? man. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm having a blast. <laughs> Pour some more of that. Yeah, he brought me the, a slice of this back probably in the, <coughs> around 1980. Mm -hmm, yeah, around. Late 70s. Yeah, late 70s. Gotta be, because, uh, and, and we had a, a janitor named Odell Brown. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. He would be very disappointed on Monday morning, because first thing he's going to say when I'm going across the breezeway, Hey, where's my cake? I'm going like, oh, I forgot. Oh, why did you do that? He said, well, I said, well, listen, we got four more days of school. I'll bring it tomorrow. I always brought uh, Coach Horn. He'd be looking for his. He'd be standing outside his door. Oh, hey, yeah. where's my cake at? And Mr. Banford would get me to make him a uh, strawberry uh, layer cake. And uh, he could, uh -huh, uh, just through the year, he I'd be in the library because, you know, I called Miss Banford mama. And so she... Um, <clears throat> Uh oh, she um he would come in and say he said we have pingress. Uh, 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 Mr. Van wanted to see you, so I go to his office. He said, hey, uh, how about throwing me a strawberry layer cake together? And I, I would, and I bring it the next day or the next day, and I uh I would bring Miss Odell, Mr. Latham, all really pretty oh. much all of them got got you know got. And you know somebody else that would make good cakes <clears throat> and bring them to school like that was Ann Bobo. Right, right. Oh Lord, what a she, character. She made good cakes too. Yeah. So, um, and then with Miss Odell, uh, when we would get out for Christmas, Christmas break from the school, 
the next the next day or, ne or a couple of days afterwards, I would ride over to her house. Oh, 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 Adam. It's okay. And and I and I would make her the Japanese uh, fruit layer cake. Uh huh. We have to show me how. Well, we I tell you what, we come over. Here, I come over here and we and I show you make how to make one. Show you how to make it, and get a drive. Get a drive. Everybody. Jerry crazy. probably like that because mm -hmm. he likes spice cake. I I had some, and somebody told somebody else that I had some, and, and my great aunt that's in Carolina Sister Garden, she wanted some, so I had to give up a Etna's Japanese layer, but. What we gonna do? Yeah, we're gonna he gave come. Away my Japanese fruit we cake gonna. I'm gonna somebody. come back and we gonna make it. Oh, I, I got a picture of it. She's seen the picture of it. That thing was that high off the table, and four layers. And also that cake you made for Candy Gore. Oh yeah, that pineapple coconut cake. Wasn't oh. that the bomb though? That was. Big. I wanted to cut it so bad. I didn't know what to do. I, I kept. I kept saying. Thing, I kept saying, Will, uh, Lee, don't bother the man's <laughs> cake now. See, years ago, I'm gonna tell him myself. Years ago. When we were baking, when I was baking for people, see, I got started baking with my mom. Uh, my mom would go around every week, the week before Christmas or the week leading up to Christmas, and make that old-fashioned Japanese fruitcake layer cake. <clears throat> so I was a little boy holding a hand, going around from house to house. Now we had several other families in the community; they they made it also. But the story comes from uh, a cousin of mine named Miss Layla. She. Thompson. I don't know what Layla's last name was. I guess she was a Craig. I think she was Craig. Layla Craig. She she um got the recipe from a lady called Miss Emily Burns from Lockhart. Buns. Buns, yes, Lockhart. Uh -huh. And so she um hey introduced it to Thompson Quarters, and of course you know it's something about these hands we could do it better than Miss Emily could. Yeah. And so Janie made it. Um. The the Miss Annabelle Thompson made her own. Evelyn Gina made her own. My mama, Ed Todd, Miss John, with all of them, and my ain't friends, they made it themselves. But my mama went all over the neighborhood making it. So when she retired from it, she passed the torch to me, and I kept that going. I've got Mrs. Miss Virginia Daniels Japanese fruit cake it, it probably, recipe mm -hmm. in her own handwriting. Oh good. Oh boy. Oh boy. You have to look at it. She okay. gave me a, a Lockhart United Methodist cookbook. And I would, and Miss Odell gave me one with Wesley Chapel Community. It's mm -hmm. blue. Yeah. Oh, oh, I would take They're a million. Good. I wouldn't take a million dollars for it. Well, I've got a cookbook that I treasure, and it's the Lemons Cookbook. Okay. Because the Lemons family has got so many great cooks, starting yeah. with my grandmother Lemons. All right. Yeah, I've heard all about her cooking. Yes. And all my aunts, and just like yours. Yeah, and see, my aunt Leola Good, she used to work at Lockhart in the kitchen, and see, the, my, my, and see, her sister is my other grandma, Wilma. That's my mom's mother. And you talking about Caburn now. <laughs> her and my mom used to work at Square Restaurant down at Chester and be cooks and chefs down there. And so she, she could do anything. My aunt Leola, she just... This is where he learned all this mm -hmm. talent. My Aunt Leola used to call me on a Sunday evening. Hey, come out here. And I go out there. She said, you know, I made yeast rolls. Um, oh, I made yeast rolls over for my little children over at the Head Start Union, and mine was just dry. How about you make a batch? I said, Aunt Leola, you know I got to go to school in the morning. She said, oh, you young, you can do it. And when I got them and got them made and everything, she, she said, now, nah, this is the way yeast rolls are supposed to take. I said, I think this is a mind game here. <laughs> but she did. I would I would cook her ten and twelve and fifteen cakes on Christmas, and I go out there want a sample wow. piece. Couldn't find a cake in the house, and guess where the cakes would be? She be done. Stomach. She be done. Uh, be done. Took all them cakes over to the head start and put them in the freezer, and she said, I had to feed my little children every Aww. day. So you know. But anyway, um, we're gonna keep on putting the um, dry ingredients, and this is the remainder of the. Um, the butter and the buttermilk. Yeah, the buttermilk and the and eggs. eggs and the flavor. I let the butter sit out to be room temperature right. instead of melting it. And you should do all of it that way. Your eggs and your milk and you all of it. Sifter for this. No, just so take some and put in there and, and uh I'm gonna go ahead and start flouring this and 
We didn't say we did, but Willie and I both washed our hands before we Right. Started. Yeah, trust me. They we real did, clean. We did not start this until we went to the bathroom and washed our hands. That is the first thing anybody should do before they cook anything. Right. You coat the bottom of the pan real good. <coughs> And then you can kind of shift the flour around. I just take mine and hit the... Yeah. And, 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 Uh-oh, we didn't get a little bit down there. But... I'll get it. Okay. Uh, I, what I, if I find a spot that ain't got... Oh, you know, I'm going to coat it off. Uh, 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 I'll, just... I'll show you when I get it finished. Yeah. And we'll pour the excess off. Now, we want to hear from everybody about this cake. Now, you know? some of your teachers that's out there that you had and some of my co-workers... That you had. I'm, I'm sure they're gonna be looking oh, like yeah. George Jones. <laughs> oh yeah, you know he his comment was, "Oh my goodness, my two favorite cooks. I'm and they gonna be in, in, in one house together." Ginger Fant. Oh yeah, Miss Fant. That's my mama. Yeah. Who else? Uh, let's see. We got Mr. Jones. We got Ginger. We got Mr. Vanderford. Edna. Mr. Lawrence Vanderford. Lawrence Vanderford. We got Miss Powell. Um, Mayora Powell. Yeah, we got Phyllis Gibson. Um, let's see who else left. Uh, you got Miss Rhonda. That was uh, she wasn't there when we were there, but she's still been a part of Miss Rhonda Tom Thomas. Oh yeah. Um, let's see who who else. Um, oh, so many of them. Rick Mathis. I thought he, Did you have? He, Philip Horn's not with us. Yeah, Phil, yeah, Coach that Horn. was real bad by Coach Horn because so, we had they had just got out of school and went back to next school and he Rick and Mathis he was, gone. was at the school. Yeah, Rick yeah. Mathis was. Oh boy, he was a mess too. Did you ever? Uh, uh, okay, people. He would say, "Okay, people." <laughs> and then you know we had Mr. Farr. Oh, he was our weather man. He's gonna tell us exactly how we're gonna get a big snowstorm in in this our part of the country. You know, he was a trip. Mr. Latham. He's not long. He's no longer with, with us either. Jane Phillips. Uh huh. And then we, uh, Miss Daniels, no longer with us. Miss Moore, Ellen Moore, Miss Miss uh, Peggy O'Dell. Um, um, how about Miss Hawkins? Is Ray? Is I, I don't. She's not. Okay, Miss Ray. Miss Ray. She was. Oh boy, she was real strict. And um, then you had uh, Miss Greer. She's still. In, she's in Spartanburg. Um, who else we all have Okay, Miss 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 Robinson, Miss Jenny Robinson. She's not with us. She's no longer with us. Uh, you got Beth, Miss Beth Wells. Yep. Um, uh, Miss Ginger Fair. Uh, Does that look good? Yeah. Um, let me see. Beat it down on the table. Get that excess out of there. You know. I probably grazed it to death, didn't I? That's good. Um. Stick. That was Mr. Reynolds, the band teacher. Um, okay, look, after you get it greased and then you flour it and shift it all over. Mm -hmm. Let me just do something, Edna. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm going to look more stricter with, with this right here. See how we just got all this extra out there? Woo! Come on out of there, bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got to put the willy to it. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that really stuck to it real good. No, you got that right. Now, <laughs> so there's your pan. And I love it because the spout doesn't come out. It stays in. But if you do if you do have one and the spout comes out, all you do is take the spout out and you turn that part down on the table, lay you some wax paper or parchment paper, and cut cut the circle. Then you fold it just like a what do you call it? Um like this right here. <clears throat> Triangle. Triangle. And then you cut the tip off, and I tell you, it'll fit right down yeah. over it. And so that's what we had to do back in the day because we didn't have one. We wasn't rich want, enough to have want. the one that fits down in there. <laughs> if you use parchment paper, it will not stick. It will not. I'm telling you. Yeah, okay, that's good. You got it all out. Yeah, so I'm going to let this go just a couple minutes, a couple seconds here, because I don't want to overbeat it. I just want to incorporate the flour in it. There you go. Ooh, look how creamy and beautiful, Edna. Oh, my goodness. So you got all the ingredients in there right now. Everything is in there. Everything that's meant to be is in there. Oh, 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 oh. What a beautiful batter. 
See, years ago, we would, you know, this was the, the, the height of when your grandma and mom was in the kitchen because she got to lick the beaters and eat the, the goodie out of the bowl. Mm -hmm. And now when we were when we were baking for Christmas or Thanksgiving, making a lot of cakes, we made samples. We would have a little old pie plate and we just put just enough batter and stick it in the oven and get it out and we break it open and if it looks real solid and pretty on the inside, you know you had some good old layer of cakes. Okay. I don't like leaving none on there. Every little bit makes the cake that it much sure better. <laughs> and we preheated the oven on 325 and it's been preheated since we started. Right. I heard it go off beep beep beep. Let you let you seat. Yeah, let you know it's ready. <clears throat> and you're gonna bake it for one hour and twenty minutes. It, 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 and it's going to depend on your oven. Everybody's oven doesn't bake the same. Now, this is an electric oven. They really, really electric is really different from gas. I don't, I have gas in my home and I don't like it. I, I really just don't like it, but I have to adjust my temperature and I can't, like if a cake says an hour and 30 minutes, it's probably going to be an hour and 10 15 minutes. Yeah, it's cooked. Uh-huh. And, cook, you, and you better get it out, of, you know, if you know what's good for you. Yeah. You better mess, dry it out. Well, now, here is the batter. This is the fin not the finished product, but the finished product of mixing it together. And see how beautiful and creamy it is? So what we're going to do, I'm going to stir it from the bottom, make sure everything is in there really good. That's the key. He's got it where it's everything's really combined real well mm -hmm. and, and it's, fluffy. It's real thick and fluffy. See, you don't if you make a pound cake in this and it's so runny, See? you pour it in the pour it in the mm -mm, you gonna you're gonna have a tight cake. So Edna's gonna twirl a pan around for me. And we're just gonna gradulate it all in this good old tube pan. This is the best kind of pan to use too. I've got a bunt pan. Yeah. And this for this recipe, I love my regular tube. Pan. Yeah, me too. I I got I got my um, my grandmas and I got two of my uh, aunt Leolas, and I got some square pans of hers. Along with these kind of pans, a tube pan is kind of hard to find now if you're looking for them. Yeah, you can get them. Um, you go online. But boy, what they want you to pay for. Phew. And they made from, I think, Wilt Wilt Wilton. I think that's what mine is. Old old company from years back, you know. Yeah. But if you can find, it's a place in Charlotte. I don't know if it's still open. I took uh, the lady from our church years ago. We built the fellowship hall up, and she bought all the, everything for the kitchen. All kind of pans and sheet pans and pots and it was a wholesale place, you right have, on Tryon. You have your special pans for special things. And you better believe it. Cast iron frying pans are a must. Oh, what you talking about? If you're going to fry some stuff, mm -hmm. you got to have that, don't you? Oh, yeah. Is that what you fry chicken in? Mm-hmm. That's right. It seems like it's not right if you don't use it. I cook everything in it. If it's going to be fried, my black skillets are out there. You got that right. Hey, you can put your biscuits in there too. You ever, you ever put your biscuits in there and bake them? All the time. Oh, oh no, no. Oh, no. You, need to try, you need to try that too. Biscuits work really well. I make well. more biscuits than a fit in them. I, I know. I, I made biscuits yesterday, and I used um, my kind of like metal pan. It helped, and then I still had like maybe that much dough left. Mm -hmm. And so I froze it. I yeah. said, yeah, I said, I'll be willing to fry up a pie one of these days. Oh, yeah. And just take it out and throw it out and get some of that dough off there. That's what Jerry loves, fried apple oh, pie. Oh, I, I fried 30 of them, sun, um, not this past Sunday, but the second Sunday for a customer. She first said she wanted 40. I said, oh, no. <laughs> I said, and I was smart enough to do the apples Friday night and... <clears throat> In the dough, so Sunday morning I just put everything together. So I did. Uh, uh -oh, hey, y'all want a sample? Let's show you how good. Oh, mm. oh yeah. Oh boy, oh it boy. It passes the raw test. Mm, uh, um, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, anyway, we're getting ready to transport it to the oven, and we're gonna say it went in there at ten minutes to three. Get on over there, Edna. 
You want a carrot? <laughs> okay, we're gonna slide this uh, buttermilk pound cake in in the, in the oven, and which has been preheated to 325. So it's supposed to cook for one hour and 20 to 30 minutes. But when I do it, it's mostly one hour and 20 minutes. You know, you 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 can you can always take it out. A little bit after an hour, it won't fall. Just if you want to peek at it and just look at it, but hour and twenty minutes, hour and twenty minutes should be sufficient. So now we're gonna slide her right on in there. Okay, sweetie. We'll see you in about an hour and twenty minutes with the finished product. With the finished product. Well, hello, folks. Well, we back in Edna's kitchen cooking with Edna. And we are going to show you our finished product of the buttermilk pound cake. So I'm going to take it out of the oven now and show you what the finished product should look like. Okay, there is your finished product. We took it about, I would say, maybe an hour and 25 minutes, and maybe, maybe five minutes over, something like that. But isn't it beautiful? Mm -hmm. So we're going to set it over here, and I guess we're going to put it on the cake plate here. Now, a lot of, a lot of times I'll just flip, take another plate and flip it so that this part will be up. You. You turn it down on your plate and flip it back. So I don't know Edna, yeah. which way you want to we'll do, do it. That. <clears throat> well, here we are back again with the finished product made by Edna Sue and Willie Pendergrass. And I'm going to let him do the cutting. And while he's cutting, I have got crushed pineapple and it's syrup. I've got fresh strawberries and it's and some sugar juice that's these are fresh from the garden, and I have sliced peaches. You take your choice, or you can eat it plain. And if you want some toppings, here's mm -hmm. some whipped cream. All right, Edna, let me serve you first. All right. Oh, this is going to be so good. It's nice and hot. Oh, mm -hmm. just look at that texture. Isn't that beautiful? Now, that's what it should look like. You can go ahead and cut Mr. Jerry, a piece. Okay, now, Mr. Jerry, we're going to give you a nice little chunk. We've been smelling it since it's been cooking. Oh, it's been driving weeks. us crazy. It smells, <clears throat> your house smells good, even if even if the cake wasn't good. Mm -hmm. This will make your house smell wonderful. I tell you, boy. Well, I'm sure it's going to be delicious. Ooh, look at it. Isn't it just so mm. beautiful? Yeah. Get around so they can see the... Yeah. Look at that. Masterpiece. <laughs> and it's very simple. Good old, old-fashioned buttermilk pound cake. And this is the recipe that we've used for how many years? Oh, I've been at it since I was little, and, and I introduced it to Edna when I was like 7th, 8th grade. And I've been out of school, oh Lord, soon be 40 years, so... <laughs> So no, I'm you know, tell you how long I've been out. I'm telling you now, but it's a it's, it's been around a long, long, long time, and pretty much I, I make a you know make a whole lot of other pound cakes, but this is my grandma's and she loved it, so I pretty much would throw it together anytime. It could be through, uh, one day through the week, and we just she'd say make that buttermilk pound cake. So here it is. Well, which topping are you gonna use? So well, I think um, I want the strawberries. Mm -hmm. Help yourself. And I think I'm going to take peaches. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably have to have a piece with all of it. <laughs> oh. What you want, Jerry? <clears throat> a little dab of yeah. whipped cream. I'll put a little bit of that. Hey, this is kind of like, like, um. You can eat it plain or either fix it up mm -hmm. any kind of way you want it. And then you can uh, either, either make a chocolate syrup. Mm -hmm. Anything you want it. And hey, or just cut your big old slice and get you a bowl with some good old uh, vanilla ice cream. Mm. And you down at the river. That means that calls for another piece. Th 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 there you go. There you go. <laughs> I really don't think I want any of this. Not really? Yeah, not really. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> let's just see. Let's just uh, bust into this bad boy. Oh. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, it's good. Oh, just melts in your mouth. Oh, it's so moist and tender. Well, stay tuned for more shows with Cooking with Edna Sue, and it was a very wonderful time to have you here. Oh, love you, Edna and Mr. You Jerry. Yeah, I've had a blast. Can't wait to see it. Okay. Until then, stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs>